We're going to enter the panel discussion, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to ask the panelists to introduce themselves. You will see a slide with, with some more information about them. They will end with a quote. We asked every panelist to send us a quote. This is very important because after this introduction, we're going to ask you all which of these quotes is the most correct, the most complete uh, to your understanding. So listen very carefully. I'm going to start with Sanjeep Ranjan, the senior director for Red Bus. Sanjeep. Hi. Um, so I don't know how many of you are aware of Red Bus. Uh, Red Bus has started in India. Um, and uh, from last four or five years, we have been trying to uh, reach to global audience, go to the different countries. Currently, we have presence in a uh, few countries in LATAM and Southeast Asia. And now we are uh, trying to uh, launch a global, uh, which is redverse.com. So I'm heading uh, that uh, uh, international business. Um, and um, the one thing which uh, I think is very relevant from my, uh, um, my point of view, that this COVID has uh, uh, you know, uh, forced uh, lots of bus operators and it, this whole ecosystem to look at technology. And um, I'm very uh, optimistic that uh, this, this will help this whole ecosystem to grow exponentially. Probably next 10 years, the growth will surpass what you have seen in last 20, 25 years. That's an optimistic message. Thank you, Sanjeep. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, Sanjeep is saying that the COVID situation here is forcing operators to adapt in technology, and this will bring a solution, a stronger position to come out of this. Let's go from uh, India, in Bangalore, where you are, Sanjeep, to, to Mexico. Sebastian Gomez is a co-founder for Reserva uh, Reservamos. Sebastian? Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Sebastian. Hey, so I'm co-founder of Reservamos. We started back in 2013 out of MIT. Um, and what we really believe is that um, through technology, there's an opportunity for bus companies to generate more revenue, lower cost, and, and really like unlock uh, customer loyalty. So we do that across uh, two business models. One, which is Reservamos SaaS, where we provide travel technology to, to the bus industry, mainly e-commerce and revenue management solutions. Mark made a point that there is no pricing in the industry today, and we're addressing that. Um, then uh, on, on business unit number two, we have uh, a reservamos.mx, which is a, uh, an online travel agency. And what we think there is that the digitalization of the bus uh, passenger is what's going to drive uh, the growth of the overall a travel and tourism vertical in general. So um, really we, we think uh, we're, we're doing this because uh, we think we can make bus travel sexy again. Um, and my quote is that I think there's gonna be titanic shifts in the market due to really fast innovation uh, driven by the digitalization of the industry and lower barriers of entry. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sebastian. That was uh, that was very clear. Mexico to Germany, Johannes from distribution. Johannes, can you unmute yourself, please? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Johannes, co-founder and CBO of Distribution Technologies here. Um, distribution Technologies is a technology provider for ground transportation or bus operators. As Mark already stated in his keynote, like bus is, was or is still very unrepresented in the global sales channels, OTAs, mobility platforms, and so on. Yeah? They focus on other verticals. What we are doing, we are connecting bus operators with, you see it, 150 roundabout global travel retailers across the world, right? OTAs, mobility platforms, airlines, wherever somebody wants to be present selling their tickets, we are connecting them there. Right, and basically take care of all the, the hustle for that, right? With one API connection or another connection, you can basically have all the contractual, commercial, technical, and settlement um, issues solved, and you can just trade no matter where you want. Yeah, with, I mean, I'm not dropping any names now, but whatever big OTA might come now to your mind, there is a good chance we are connected and bringing bus operators there. Yeah, and I think this is also very fundamental part of the recovery, which also Mark said already. Yeah, we believe that in to survive in the post-COVID world, you have to really play your online sales smartly, be visible, right? 
you have to partner or you will get consolidated. Thanks so much, Johannes. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we'll show you all the quotes uh, in a minute, make it easy for you to make, uh, to make your choice. Mark, I come back to you. Just mention your quote, please. What is the key of your message here? I think that um, bus is actually um, one key part to solve the problems that we have with congestion and pollution. And I think for that, it has a very bright future and we have to start now to actually do this. Okay, thank you so much. This is another uh, accent we, we didn't hear before. The link to climate change, uh, traffic jams, uh, etc. Marco Javornik, great to see you again. You were the guest at different Basrold uh, academies. Can you introduce yourself for the people? Thank you. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Marco Javornik. I'm general manager of Voyego. So they say it takes 66 days to, on average to change behavior. We are now nine months basically working online, having webinars online, eating online, uh, uh, shopping online and so forth. And it's fair to say there will be three more months for most of us. So expect that after COVID-19, there's a massive acceleration of digitalization. And in mobility, this concept is known as mobility as a service. We know what needs to be done. There are five bullets below but not many traditional companies are able to be su successful in this. It is now a good opportunity to step back, look at various industries and recognize why is this so difficult and what is the right way to do it. So my quote is, uh, mass is the new uh, vision and the proper digitalization of infrastructure is the path to success. Thank you so much, Marco. Digitalization as the only or the best way to go to, to Mars. Uh, thanks so much. My colleague Inge is representing the uh, Belgian Federation for Bus and Coach Operators, and we started our own initiative. Inge, can you introduce us? Yes, of course. You might know me from Busworld mainly, but Busworld is also um, organized by the federation called BAAV. So I will be representing BAAV today and specifically a project that we have been doing for the members here in Belgium, together with another federation in Belgium. So BAAV is a Flemish federation. We have 148 uh, operator members here. And we started a project called busfan.be. Hannes, you can proceed a little. So this is uh, my quote. I will not say too much about it because Jan will give us the time to explain later. But I also do believe that uh, digital is here to stay and that small companies cannot survive by themselves. They have to work together. They have to partner. Hannes, can you? And that's why we came up with this project called busfan.be. Uh, this is a platform where we uh, group all coach holiday um, offers in Belgium together in one platform. So we actually can compete with the big uh, tour operators. Um, this means um, that it's a non-commercial platform, of course, because it's owned by the Federation and there is no advertising possibilities. Everybody has the same uh, chance of being visible. Hannes, can you? And also um, all these smaller companies together, they uh, act like one uh, big school of fishes. So we are big enough like this to compete with the big tour operators. And I think it's very important that the federations uh, help their members, the small companies especially, to uh, do this kind of uh, activity together to be big enough and important enough to survive on the internet. Thank you so much, Inge. Thanks for introducing uh, yourselves, uh, everybody. I'm going to pick some of the things uh, you, you said to, to open the debate. Um, it is clear to all of you that uh, the way to get out of this crisis and especially the way to come out stronger is via digital tools. And, and the reason for that is because the last couple of months we, we've been living online. Our, our life was nowhere else than, than, than online. Is this 
an evolution that is here to stay, I mean, especially in, uh, in bus and coach transport, what parts of, of this digital revolution, I may say, uh, is going to stay? What parts are going probably uh, not survive the, the crisis? Um, maybe let, let's go to, to Sanjeev. Uh, in, in Red Bus, what are your conclusions? Uh, what do you see uh, that the bus and coach operators working with Red Bus, what are they doing and what, why do you think they will stay working in this way? So one, um, uh, a good opportunity which uh, we had been trying in the past to push more and more data to bus operators. And uh, I, 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 do, I don't want to uh, put that uh, uh, this in the head that it was not happening, but what has happened now, if we share the data, let's say we have access to data from Google, we have access to data from our own websites, like let's say, which route has more demand, where services should be higher, where you can put new service, where pricing can be different. Uh, I think this is going to stay now. Uh, earlier, it was more difficult for us to, I'm talking not only from India, even Malaysia, even in Indonesia. Uh, and some of these countries, uh, especially in Asia, we don't see this dynamic uh, pricing. Uh, see, this is very uh, a simple world that, you know, a world which we say dynamic pricing. It doesn't mean that you just increase price by 20%. So we used to see that, that you know, bus operators will, when you say, hey, uh, your load factor's high, why not you increase the price? So without any scientific application, they will just increase the price. Yep. The high one launched our product dynamic pricing long back, but the adoptions were lower. But I think that this whole um, COVID scenario has given enough time uh, for the bus operators to think about it. Mm -hmm. The second okay. thing, I think route planning, which will, which will definitely, which was very, common in the very, you know, if you are a very large operator, but was not very common when you are mid-size operator or a small operator, uh, a timing and route planning, this, 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 this is going to stay. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you so much. You're uh, immediately referring to analyzing data and coming to the possibilities for dynamic pricing, even dynamic route planning. Uh, I'm going to, to Mexico, to Sebastian. Uh, do you see the same? Yeah, and, and, and the point that I wanted to make is that I think we have uh, had a, a massive kind of amount of information coming from all the pandemic regarding digitalization. And uh, we have been at uh, like enticing and pushing digitalization from seven years back in the industry. And the big reason of why we uh, push that thesis is one, we have data that selling a ticket online cost 50% less than selling that ticket in the terminal. And so that is a direct impact to your business. Then number two, if more of your customers get online, you have more data, better data. And with that data, you can unlock revenue opportunities. Um, and so I really think that is the main driver of why to go digital in the industry. And of course, COVID has just accelerated this trend. Okay, so uh, I'm coming to you, Mark. So what you're saying, Sebastian, is that digitalizing your, uh, your offer, your, your sales structure, et cetera, is working price reductive, right? It's decreasing the price of, of your, your operations uh, itself. Let me stay for, for 10 seconds more with, with the two of you. You are both running a, uh, let's say, a sales platform and an ATO. Um, what did this crisis, let's say since March, what did it do for the number of bus or coach operators working with your platform? Has it in, I'm not talking about the turnover. I'm talking about the number of companies Working, working via you. Was there an evolution since March, uh, Sanjeev first? So see, uh, we, are, we are still waiting for all the operators to come back to the platform and start, start selling. Ah, but uh, okay. so, it's, so then only we can recognize that uh, there are. But however, uh, surprisingly, there are a few new operators who have come up, especially okay. in Malaysia. Uh, see. 
What was the situation in Mexico, Sebastian? Did, did people get away from the platform saying that there, there is no business, so, so there's no point being there? Or was it just a reflection of this is the time to, to find new sales structures via your platform? No, and, and, and uh, look, we have, we have seen a surge of uh, new customers coming into the platform and coming as customers of, of technology adoption. And the, the reason for that is that um, in Latin America in general, bus companies relied on hard assets like terminals and, and yeah. infrastructure to be able to remain competitive and attract yeah. demand. And that is no longer true in this environment. Right now, any company that has a good service with a digital phone uh, and an online strategy can go and attract customers. And so I'll, I'll share a few facts that we have from our platform that we see. So in, among the top three routes in Mexico, we have two companies that came in as providers in this uh, during the pandemic. And to give you a sense, like these companies have gone from zero to 11% of consumer intent in these routes. And that is massive change. And yeah. that's really because they're providing a more digital service, they're addressing the customer needs. And uh, that is why I believe that the industry is being reset and there's gonna be a transformation of the uh, quotas of, of participation in the industry. I understand. Mark, you, you wanted to interfere? Yeah, just quickly uh, connected actually to what Sebastian said. We, we saw, especially in Latin America, that the curves of uh, user demand and also transactions uh, partly are even higher year on year uh, than they were uh, in 2019. Um, and if you talk with operators, that doesn't reflect really their reality uh, by 100% at least. The crisis has been a little bit weaker in some places than it has been in, in Europe or the United mm -hmm. States. And that, and that is pretty clear, a shift that actually happened from the user side, from a terminal uh, driven business or to, to an online driven business, because probably people don't want to be at terminals anymore, especially at that point of time. So there has been a big shift. And if I look at our partners, we haven't lost partners. Um, people didn't come go out the platform because there's no need because if actually um, we don't send a user no one has to pay so this is a 100 percent performance driven business yeah. so why should someone get out of course we acquired also new customers new partners yeah. but we saw also in that time quite a few companies said why should i come on the platform now let me wait until this crisis is over and i asked myself of course why would you want to wait uh, especially in times where you have difficulties to acquire customers because maybe they're a little bit more reluctant to jump on your bus. Why would you actually miss out a distribution channel uh, that you only have to pay if you're successful? And we saw that quite often that people just said, okay, let me wait. Let's see what, what happens. And then let's make decisions again after the crisis. Okay. Okay. We, we see that um, digitalization is, is, is kind of a, a new, not new marketing tool, but, but trying to, to, to enlarge your turnover, et cetera, reaching more clients. What is for a coach operator necessary to have in order to enter uh, this phase? And there, there's two phases. Actually, I can go digital just by myself, improve my website, improve my e-commerce, uh, et cetera. And then in the second phase, doing it in a joint way, together on a platform for, with others. Johannes, I'm coming to you. What is necessary um, in terms of investment, in terms of, of operations, for a coach or bus company to go digital in a smart way, as you say it in your quote? Uh, we cannot hear you, Johannes. Uh, or, yeah, I think the, the actually the initial investment that you have to do, I think it's quite small, right? There is a lot of software as a service solutions out there which provide you already digital backbone for your inventory management, right? There is all kinds of ways connecting to the customers already, right? And this is also what we are really seeing right now in the market, which are what the customers are coming for right now. Now, as this the crisis truly have been a like a, like a proper reset of the market, yeah. Um, the demand which grew over years, right, suddenly collapsed within days, right? Networks which have been built over a long period of time, yeah, were suspended now or completely uh, gone, yeah? And now we see such a fast and shifting behavior, 
right? That is a very delicate uh, continuum right now. Yeah, and to be able to to move in there, you need this digital backbone, right? Your IMS, your your software, uh, to access the digital channels. Yeah, and there is, I think, is really what we see right now for our customers when they come to us is key, right? To get as much exposure as possible, right? Because you anyhow you have a limited network and you need to get the few buses full, right? So you need to push your inventory everywhere. Yeah, you really need exposure. The other one is. You need to also, when when suddenly you see it every day, right? As soon as the COVID numbers go down, the market is opening up, the demand rises within days, right? So often our customers struggling with rebuilding the networks right now, yeah? So I think what we currently are seeing is that they are not necessarily building these networks themselves, but they are partnering with others, right? Connecting, for example, our API, being able to sell other bus operators yeah, to feed their hubs, right? To to do some other routes they haven't tried before, not to overextend on the fixed cost, right? I think this is really key on that. Yeah. You need to balance in the new market dynamics, right? The new reality that we are in without overextending on the fixed cost side. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, coming to to Marco um, and then, then then to Inge again. Um, Marco, to make the step is that really a first phase to go individual in your digitalization strategy before you enter a platform or a group or can you just go from operations as usual maybe you have a website uh, but that's it uh, entering a, a platform what is the right strategy there is there steps to be respected or can we just go yeah excellent question so first I would say let's look from the big picture. So to the question, is the digitalization here to stay or not? So I would suggest everybody to look at digitalization as industrial revolution. It is here to stay. So it's not going away. Once you invent a wheel, you don't go back and, and forget about it. So this is how I would suggest to look at it. Um, we are now talking about digital necessity. So it is everybody must start the digitalization process. And now what we are seeing is that with traditional companies like bus operators, they will need to realize that the business that they were doing for two, three decades is radically different than the new business, the new digital platform economy. Now, how do you then go about? Well, you need to build yourself the right foundation so that you can start with the ecosystem play, plugging into the platforms and so forth. And here, one of the key thing will be to understand uh, uh, that there must be a good solid data strategy. And here I would advise everybody to think about digital twins, about the key entities, you know, like obviously the key, one of key entity will be uh, your passengers, your consumers. Another will be the buses, the seats on the bus. Another one will be the drivers and so forth. So you will need to create an environment in which you can build the digital platform economy and decouple it from your traditional business, which will be moving in a different, in, in a mechanical world. So you will still be moving seats from city to city. This is still your core business and your strength, but you need to decouple the digital layers of your business and enable much, much faster innovation and the agility that comes with this. Okay, you're opening the debate from, from the purely marketing side to, to managing the whole company, uh, indeed. Sanji, before I come to you, let me go to, to Inge. We've been talking about uh, mostly intercity bus trips. What about coach tour, tourism and package deals, Inge? What you're doing with, with bus, uh, bus fan, how did it influence the, the Belgian uh, coach operators? How successful are you and what is the difficulties you, you meet? Well, of course, the individual websites still are very important because we are not a booking platform. We are just a platform uh, that, that gives distribution. When people want to know more about a specific trip, they are redirected to the website of the operator. So of course the operator still has like uh, his own identity, his own brand, his own responsibility for his digital part of, uh, of closing the sales. Um, but we have seen in the beginning, the members were very skeptical and it was something that uh, the federations decided to do without actually the help of the members. So we are still doing this. We are adding all the 
the trips and the holidays ourselves to the database of the of the website. Um, and that's really necessary because um, a lot of members did not really see the necessity of being digital and online. Um, but nowadays, they are really convinced about the force of BuzzFan. They really see um, that it's bringing them business and new business. And actually, uh, for COVID-19, the relaunch after COVID-19, um, the main focus will be BuzzFan. We are promoting the whole sector through BuzzFan. We are doing the promotion uh, digitally, mainly via Facebook and Google. And it just works. Every year, it's getting better and we see very positive results. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. I promised you the last 30 seconds before we go to the first poll, Sanjeev, you, you wanted to, to respond to something? Yeah, uh, I was just coming back to your uh, cost. See, uh, the digitization cost is free from last three, four years. It is all about the switching cost of a bus operator, the, mind, uh, the mindset and the operational cost which is involved. So mm. earlier, the digitization is available. They were not willing to put time or effort behind it. Uh, so that's what I wanted to. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. No cost involved. Mark, can you allow me to go to the poll first? We'll, we'll take it back from where Sanjeev ended, uh, ended this. Ladies and gentlemen, you've had an introduction with uh, all the speakers. Hollis, can you show us? the quotes that they, they've given. We'd like to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, and don't forget to scroll down so you see them all. We'll give you like 30 seconds, just make your choice. Which quote is to your opinion, the most correct? I see that there is um, some similarities in, in, in the quotes. Uh, I think everybody is agreeing that digitalization is important. Um, Johannes was saying that, yes, but it's absolutely necessary that you play it smart. And it will be necessary together with playing uh, your online sales smartly to partner or to, to consolidate, right? The, the big changes in, in the markets uh, caused by innovation, uh, are driven by digitalization, as, uh, as Sebastian said, so there's no way to leave it just behind you. Uh, Marco uh, focused on, on mass, which is a concept that is getting into the sector uh, right now, but the way to get there is to get connected and, and to have the right uh, infrastructure and the path there. Um, I think it was Sanjeev who said, you have no choice, COVID is forcing you to adopt uh, technology. Um, Mark made the link to, to climate change and to, in his keynote speech uh, as well, and to the economic crisis that might be, might be following this. So yes, we all consider Buzz and Coach as a very important part of the solution to, towards uh, the effects of, of transport and climate change. Um, but it will be absolutely necessary to work via digital tools there. I forgot one, I'm too late for one other quote. Hollis, can you show us the results? Which speaker will? I see that the first speaker indeed, uh, Johannes, uh, I think 23% uh, of all attendees and we're over uh, 120 by now um, is saying that yes, we have to play uh, or online sales smartly and partner and consolidation will be absolutely necessary. And I also see that the other uh, quotes that are quite close to what you said, uh, Johannes, are also making a score over uh, 21. What is a strange thing, Marco, uh, is that only 9% of the people make the connection to, to mass, while this is, as I thought, the real context that uh, we are talking uh, into. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your uh, participation. I promise to, to get back to, uh, to what you, you said before, to what Sanjeev said, and Mark wanted to pick in. Um, just th this direction. Now, as Inge said, here in Belgium, it's the Federation putting the offer of the coach operators on one website and trying to promote the Buzz and Coach offer as one to, uh, to the public. How come it is that difficult? to convince coach operators 
first of all, to go digital, and secondly, to go digital, let's say, in a kind of a communicative way. Um, Mark, uh, can I come to you with this one? Yeah, quickly. Um, <clears throat> I'll respond to that in a, in a second. I think number one, mass, um, that's probably a reason why, why that was uh, relatively low, because it's a concept which I think is, is definitely uh, the future, but it's a concept that is a little bit further down the road because it requires a lot of connection on the contractual and digital side. So that, that yeah. might, be, might be difficult. And what I found interesting with Marco and also I think Sebastian said it on the data side is that, um, you have to work with data. And I think in this room, there's so much data. And I think it happens rarely that actually operators are coming and, and ask us about data. Of course, we cannot uh, give all data to other companies, like especially when it comes to competitive competition data or prices, but we can actually help with data and information about routes, about frequency, about a lot of things, but we are rarely asked about it. Some do, which is surely helpful, but a few people doing it. Sometimes it's just, you know, asking and then seeing, reaching out to the environment. And maybe that is also one thing, what you said, um, Jan, that sometimes bus companies, and it's not all bus companies, but some bus companies are a little bit reluctant to actually jump on platforms, jump on distribution channels, because I think a lot of the business initially comes about being super good on operations, uh, making sure that the buses are operating in a perfect yeah. manner, that when it comes to charter, that um, someone said from a charter business uh, to me, Mark, uh, you have to make sure that um, if uh, like um, in the Nordic somewhere with a lot of snow, a bus is basically on the road, you have to make sure that people are not freezing to death um, mm -hmm. because they overnight on the road. And I think if, if a lot of that focus is actually operation, and then a lot of new insights and digital stuff is coming in, but you don't have the resources, especially in a smaller company built up that actually are dealing with that. There might be also fear or there might be something which prevents you from trying out something. A lot of these things you can just try out with very limited risk and very limited costs, but people are not necessarily doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's probably something tried out, especially for smaller companies. You can't lose much, we, probably nothing. We, we come to that. Uh, we come to the difference uh, in this entry for bigger companies and, sm and smaller companies. Uh, Sebastian, you, you reacted. Do you see I, in the Reservamos any reluctancy of, of operators to join you? No, and, and I think I will, I, no, definitely not. I think uh, people, at least uh, the, the CEOs and, and the C-suite people that we speak in, in the industry in LATAM are already seeing the digital trend there. And we don't see it not only in the transportation industry, for example, it, it's been happening with the fintech industry. So I think it's more prevalent in, in the society right now. But I, I was going to go to to Mark's point. And, and I think... Um, um, there's something that us as software companies uh, have ingrained in our kind of mode of operation, and that is that of rapid innovation. And rapid innovation happens like every day for us. Uh, for example, for a, a bus partner who adopts our SaaS technology, we do approximately 10 or 15 releases per month. And that is like, I think it's independent of the tactic whether it's what Inge was uh, proposing. Um, I think the industry needs to get into a mentality of testing out many ways as possible yep. because our biggest objective right now is to really engage with the customer. Yes. And, we, and, and that's really what we believe. Um, that's what's going to make a company persist in, 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 and, be, in, and have longevity. Yep, yeah, it, it's like test whatever uh, is possible and, and come to your own conclusions. Uh, Johannes, do, do you see this as well? Is uh, distribution approached by, by bus and coach operators saying, let me test, show me what's on the market, uh, give me some demos, let me test it. How does it work? Yeah, definitely. I think we see uh, while there is less demand on the customer side, like uh, on the trading side, there is way more demand from the operators and people want to start selling bus, right? We always say to them, like, it might be the worst time to be in bus right now, but actually it's the best time to start this, right? Because it's now again, like a level playing field. 
But I would also say like still there is, I mean, even though the demand is much higher these days, way higher on different levels, like I said, not only being distributed, but also cons getting other operators content to sell this in their own networks, there is still hesitance, right? I mean, it's not like everybody is now super open suddenly. I very much share the view of Mark before. There is still a lot of um, education you have to do, right? And I think this is also very normal, right? Because as also as Mark said, yeah, most operators come from operating, right? They have a different, totally different other uh, focus points, right? And now stepping out of your comfort zone, going digital, giving your data, your bookability to other people, right? I mean, that's that's not an easy step. Yeah, and I think it's why I also love this actually this academy so much. Is like this educational piece is so much needed, right? Because actually, it is the only way out of that, right? And I think we it's just about like finding a good way to communicating this yeah so for us it's it's basically as you said right demand as i said it's higher the demand is higher but it's still an educational process to really see uh, and how we can turn this thing together around i see um yes thank you indeed is it is it really translating that the easier i can find a ticket the easier i will come to buzz and coach offers is, is it as simple as that I mean that's not all, for, right? But it's, for the but it's yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's not everything, right? That no, means of course not. many, many things, right? Prices, frequencies, the quality of the service, etc. We all know it, right? But I think the accessibility is key, right? Without the access, nothing else matters. You can have the best pricing in the world. You have the most luxurious buses. If the customers don't find that, yeah, it's all nothing. Okay, is marketing really the main? playing field for digitalization in, in bus companies? Um, I'm going to, to Sanjeev, maybe. Sorry, uh, when you say marketing, uh, what do you mean by acquiring? I mean, uh, mean finding more, more clients. Um, OK, uh, so see, uh, finding more clients have never been a difficult part because bus industry is not as fragmented as you find hotel industry, right? So in, in any country, if, when we enter, Let's say for uh, take an example, even a country like India, how many bus operators will be there? Probably 10,000. But if yeah. you put, let's say, people on the ground, but let's say if you go to a smaller countries like Malaysia or even Indonesia will have 500 good operators and then probably 1,000 operators. So we, we uh, I will take a very good example, Indonesia, which is uh, you will be surprised that hardly five or 10%, 10% not more than 10% bus operators are digitized. And uh, we have been putting our effort for last three, four years to make them digital, uh, bring them online. So that was never a part of uh, uh, this, right? And even uh, that's where I said that when COVID hits, right? Before what was happening that every bus operator wanted to go digital. It was never, I, I hardly met someone who said, no, I, I'm not interested. Yeah, okay. But what used to happen, and then when you say that, okay, now is the time for you to go live, and then it will take six months, one year, even sometimes two, three years, and you leave the hope that this particular company will ever go digital. Because mm -hmm. what will happen? Sometimes owners will be too busy, like Mark or even uh, or Johannes was saying, uh, in operational stuff. And uh, it's a human nature, right? When, when we, right. you know, when, when we are busy, we don't get time to think about anything else. So they were always in, okay, okay, yeah, yeah I'm not getting time. My manager will do it. I will hire someone who understands technology, who will do it. Now what has happened that they are getting time and this technology or our numbers or they were always, we were always there, mm -hmm. but now they are asking us that, hey, you had presented. I understand. Us. I'm interested in. Uh, but one, uh, one, yes, please continue. One aspect which uh, uh, I'm coming to what Johanna said that the distribution, right? When we entered in Singapore or Malaysia, and when we were meeting them, and we were saying that we have done quite a good work in India, and probably we wanted to, you know, uh, use uh, and because we we have been always a B two C front uh, company, so we know how to generate demand. So one question will always come in their mind that what is demand you will bring? I have my loyal set of customers, so we had to show them that hey, it's not about you are competing only with the you know, your own uh, set of bus operators. Sometimes you're competing with airline as well. You're competing with the self-driven uh, vehicle. So for, I will take you a very good example. Singapore to Kuala Lumpur is four hour journey. 
by bus, actually it's three and a half hour. If you take a flight, it becomes actually five hours because you have to mm -hmm. go one and yeah. three. And we had to show them that, hey, as a red bus, I'm bidding against Tiger Airlines, I'm bidding, bidding against Air Asia. I can bring value and that's how, it took longer time to bring them, mm -hmm. you know, on our, that. because if you are not distributing your inventory, then, then you are just competing uh, among yourselves. And you, you are happy enough that, you know, uh, I'm not giving commission to the uh, OTA. And that's what they were stopping them because they were thinking that, hey, this set of customers which are coming to yep. me today, they will come through this guy or this company and I will end up paying probably 10% or whatever percent is commission uh, to this particular company. So I think those, those were the uh, hurdles yeah. which we... Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Let me come to, to the consequences, to, to the evolutions we're going to. Will this digitalization process um, facilitate the, the multimodality of, of, of transport? Will it, will it influence uh, as the mass concept, uh, Marco, I'm coming back to you, as the, as the mass concept is saying, buy one ticket and go from your door to the place where, where you want to be. Is, is digitalization uh, helping in this? I understand that we are not there. Uh, it's a concept that might be a bit far away, as, as Mark said. But what is the time? When will we get there? And what do coach operators have to do to make the position of bus and coach in this mass landscape as strong as possible to, to have the, to keep their position? Yeah. So dig digitalization changes things. So the customer. Uh, goes into the center, and and this this is how the mobility should be looked like. So user centric. This is what happens. Now, it will take a decade, maybe two decades, to really this dream come true. But it is very important to understand that as we are going into the digital world, you do you do need to steer your activities with a very very strong vision. Let's learn from the best, you know, Elon Musk, 2004, when he started working on a roadster, the goal was, the dream was not to do a roadster and then Model S and then Model X. The, the dream was to make electric car that will become pervasive. And this dream took 15 years to do in a very agile way. So today Tesla is doing like 28 updates per week. So they're very agile, iterative and so forth but you can only be successful in this very, very agile approach if you have incredibly strong vision and if you see 10 years, 20 years ahead, what's happening. That is why I believe it does make sense to look at the mass, even though we all know it will not be next year, it will not be the year after, this is a 10, 20 year vision. But if you want to be successful in this, you need to have a very strong vision that drives organization. And then you need to think, where is my role in this? And you need to be humble and understand maybe you will not do everything yourself. Maybe you will need to partner with many, many companies around, yeah. but you can carve out you, the market for yourself. I think this is the right approach. I, um, I understand, Marco. Um, what's the difference in realizing this goal between a big company and a small company? Some of our members are thinking, I have to find a driver for this uh, trip tomorrow uh, there, and then they have no overhead structure. Uh, and 80% of the, of the bus operators worldwide is, is small and middle-sized enterprises. How are we going to get this group into this evolution? Anybody? Uh, Sanjeev? Sanjeev, then Mark? Yeah? Sanjeev, go on. I have a very good example from India, right? Uh, so we were, there were a couple of routes. I think some of, uh, especially uh, Jan, you might be aware that there's a Bangalore and there's a Chennai, which is very uh, good route for bus operators. And there were very large players. But over the years, what we realized that there were very small players with one or two services. And they got rid of all this having branch, having agents, and they went ahead and fully relied on the online players. And because their costs were very low, uh, uh, no overhead, and they started uh, you know, grabbing the market share for the larger players. So there are good examples, even uh, I think uh, there's one operator called Orange Travels, uh, uh, six, seven years back, it was a very small, just in taxi. Now in six years, they, they charge premium 30% more than any large operator on the same routes, but still they have 90 to 100% load factor. 
So it's never about, you know, these small operators might be small today, but I, I don't treat them as small because it's always, you should look at some of them as a, a large potential. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, not doing mm -hmm. the way traditionally it was uh, done uh, and they're grabbing market share. I understand what you're saying. Mark, you, you wanted to react on this? Yeah, very quickly. I think, uh, of course, small companies um, have a certain lack of resources um, to basically human um, resources. get uh, human resources. Yeah? Um, yeah, But I think in many ways, um, human resources are not necessarily tied. A lot is not tied to the execution, but a lot is tied uh, to decisions and also to, um, let's say, being afraid of making a wrong strategical decisions. Quite often people are talking, yeah, should we work with you or should we work with someone else? Um, the question is not necessarily that. The question is basically, why not working with all channels where you don't have integration costs on that side? Try it out, basically see what the return is and switch uh, the importance of the channels which give less return and increase the importance of the channels which give more return. And a lot of discussions were going in that in that range, should I make a strategic decision going left or should I go right? It's not necessarily about that. It's really, especially if you're a small company, behave like a startup, try things out, go left, go right, try Johannes, try Sebastian, try Sanjeev, try Mark, try whoever, and basically maybe work with all of them and see that basically your distribution split is as good as possible and mix that up with Facebook and mix that up with direct partnerships with the hotels around where someone gives you a free tracking software to do this because it doesn't cost anything and they even help you to embed it and and roll up that whole part with very limited yeah. costs but just do it i think that's that's probably key and that also works for small companies and it does work for start startups i understand sebastian i think one point i actually think that the smaller companies have an edge in this type of market and and my reason to believe that is that one, the companies that are smaller are more nimble. Um, they are more accustomed to operating with more constraints. Um, and this is a market full of constraints. And actually, like in a smaller company, the management is in the front line addressing the consumer needs, while incumbent players are actually strategizing on how to prepare to address the situation. Yeah. And that's really what I think that... Um, there's a tremendous opportunity for small companies to capture market share in this uh, environment. Um, and um, like, as I speak, uh, for example, to, to CTOs and CEOs of the company, like I, I asked them, okay, what is the major um, like threat that you have right now? And it's really the speed of change. Yep. And, uh, and that's what their incumbents are facing today in their organizations. And that's what you need to correct. So is outsourcing the management of the speed of change the solution for some, some coach uh, companies? I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just continue one second on that point. I don't think so. I think one of the biggest challenges of adopting a digital model is not on the marketing tactic, it's on the talent. And I think the talent has to have a combination of an internal strategy, you need to build up your digital teams, but you also need to rely on partners who are savvy to be able to shorten that uh, curve of, of uh, like that that lesson curve that you need to to take to be able to operate faster in a digital market. I uh, understand. Uh, yes, there's one more thing. If I'm, I would be a coach operator. Um, I completely follow what you're saying, Sebastian. It is the speed of change that is hard for me to manage. But what I see with, with the members we have in our federation and, and what I hear in the Basralt uh, Academy activities all over the world is that there is also some kind of fear of losing control over your own sales, right? I'm, I'm giving my sales to somebody else and that scares me. Is, how does that influence uh, your businesses? Um, maybe, maybe Johannes. Um, yeah, is uh, that something you recognize? One hundred ten percent, right? Before coming to that, by the way, I would just want to make one more point on this big and small discussion. I think it's truly not about that. It's only about the mindset. 
right? Yeah, if if you have like you can have the biggest rail operator out there, right? If you have the right people at the right place with the right mindset, they will get things done. They will be agile, they will be nimble, they will be, no matter how the world looks inside this, this operator, they will find their ways, right? They will find their ways in the market. And the same thing can, could go for a small one. Yeah? If they are stuck with their beliefs, right? They're, it doesn't matter how small you are, you will still not turn the ship around. So this is one thing on that. On the other one, okay. um, and, and that's, that's what, what we see, right? I'm not saying yeah. that's really just what, what we see in the market, right? Um, so what was the other one again? So the other one was if I if I source out if I yeah. go and work with a platform oh, yeah, yeah. like Reservamos or like Redbus yes. or or or, or, or yes. check my bus do I lose the control over my sales? I think you are you are you are you're gaining the control over yourself over <laughs> your sales, right? I mean, that be, otherwise you're giving them to your competitors. Yeah. If yeah. you don't play the game, the others will play it for you. We have seen this now so many times in Europe, actually, where really big like bus operators have taken the control right and if yeah. you are not out there uh, doing it yourself you will be losing your customers right waiting is the worst thing you can ever do in this market yeah agree. so I, I like look of course these are important topics customer data is super important right you have to choose your it or your partners very wisely right that you have customer ownership 100 percent degree right these things you really must tick the boxes before you make a decision but as mark said you can try different things right just trial and error see how how you how the market behaves to the different measures you are taking this is the best thing you can do i believe mm -hmm. customer ownership as, as you mentioned johannes also refers to um getting my brand in the picture not the brand of my sales platform or but my own brand uh, we see flixbus be, being very strong in this uh, in in this concept um if working with with, with a platform and then with differ, uh, different strategies how do i keep my brand visible to to my clients how do i keep my customer uh, mark maybe well I mean, of course, you could work with Check My Bus, and I have to say that right now, because um, when you're working direct with us, users are redirected to the operator's page, and then you have full control of the customer. So I think that's probably a very easy way of making sure that you have basically all touch points of the customer, and you basically are able to grab the customer and make it loyal. Now, would I say that in that sense, it doesn't make to work with OTAs, or that's a competing model? I wouldn't say so. I would say basically, there are in, in the holistic picture of all channels, you should basically work with these different channels because all of them have a benefit. And OTA, from my point of view, brings you a lot of direct business where you don't have a lot of hassle. Uh, we, for example, bring the direct customer control. Um, I think distribution uh, distributes basically your inventory to a broader scale. So there are a lot of these different solutions which all have their different strengths. And the question for me is not either or. I mean, just see where you get most out of it in, in all respects. I think in general, controlling your own brand, if you want to manage and grow your business, is absolutely key. Uh, so yep. that's, uh, there are a lot of companies that have been very, very successful without mentioning any specific names right now or colors. Um, mm -hmm. it, it actually, they really focus that they don't lose many touch points to, to any other areas where they are risking to, to lose control of their brands. Okay. There have also been other companies who have been super successful, not focusing so much on their brand, but then they have a different scheme. So then they are more on, let's say, the operational side, so the hardware side, and not really on the distribution side. So I think if you want to win, you have to play these different areas, your okay. brand, but also your, your distribution. Um, fill me in, uh, Mark, very shortly. If I'm a passenger, I uh, am looking for a ticket from Berlin to, to, to Brussels. I'll get all information about uh, time schedules, including price on Check My Bus. Sure, yeah. Price, okay, brands, and if I want to buy the ticket, you will refer me to the, to the, the website of the operator. Yeah. Okay, how, how is that different in, in Red Bus? And I'm coming to you after that, Sebastian. How is that different in, in Red Bus, Sanjeev? So it's a, for us, it is a, a booking happens on our platform uh, and uh, that's how it is different. I think uh, in case of Check My Bus, it, uh, the traffic goes to, like he was explaining, it goes to the 
bus operator websites. However, coming back to uh, the question, right? Uh, I think we missed one part in that, that when we say that, you know, bus uh, op for operators, uh, they need control. See, we need to divide this into two parts. One is while you are selling, whom do you want to sell? So I will give you one example. Let's say Red Bus gets millions and millions of users, right? And if you are present there, you are getting a free branding activity because that is also, you know, see people pay on Google to you know, put your search on the top, right? First, second is if you, if you look at some of our, or most, I think most of the companies will be doing some algorithm that we want to put uh, more visibility to the bus operator whose services are higher. That means in free, if your NPS or services are good, in a top search result, and the OTAs are you know, bringing traffic and you have opportunity to showcase your brand for free. Now, mm -hmm. coming to owning the customer, right? You need to look at that when you someone bought a bus, eventually that person is not traveling in red bus, that person is traveling in your bus. And you have all the opportunity to, you know, acquire that customer with your best in class services. Yeah. Okay, but but it's it's the it's the platform who's referring the client to this or or that uh, operator, uh, right? Sebastian, did you want to add something? Yeah, no, and I just wanted to say like we're addressing it in two ways. I think the, our thesis is that the most important booking channel will be your direct channel for sure. And that, that's how we are helping bus companies with Reservamos SaaS to really have control of all their supply and all their distribution channels in one place. Um, and then how I see the OTA, I, I see the OTA as a, attracting different customer segments. And uh, that's the value of participating in channels such as Red Bus, such as Check My Bus, such as Reservamos. In, in our case, why do we control the transaction? And it's pretty much because we believe that once you have the customer within your funnel, it is better to lock that customer, keep that transaction, gain that customer for our bus partner that's participating and just not lose having the risk of, of losing that customer in the whole yeah. process. Um, but, but, I, but I think uh, there's multiple models and, and everyone here plays a part. Um, it goes back to all the point of, of Johannes that it's, we need to give the industry more visibility for it to grow. I, uh, I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much. I saw the message from, uh, from Hannes. One last question, Marco, you have some experience, quite some experience in aviation as well. What are the most important lessons that bus and coach operators can learn from aviation in this sector? I think, I think there are a couple. So, so I think one, uh, direct versus indirect, uh, channels, you know, it's, I think it's more the question of gatekeepers, you know, do you have gatekeepers that commoditize you? If you have, you're in trouble. If not, then indirect channel can be quite a good strategy. The other thing where airlines are really, really strong, and I think they have a five, 10 year advantage um, versus other transportation uh, industry is ancillary revenue. So airlines were really, really fast because they were forced to, to actually find profits and new, new significant revenues by selling other things uh, associated to the trip. We are talking first, of course, about the baggage, meals, and so forth, but later on, this went into everything, you know, the museum, the restaurant, you name it, you know? Yep. And, and, and they really, uh, uh, some of the players, and, and actually we were very much involved in this, managed to digitalize this properly, and there are now new standards, you know, how you actually package the plane ticket together with a bunch of ancillaries, and you will see that the leading airlines are making more profit now from this than, than from the ticket itself. So, I see. What, what you're saying, Marco, concluding, do you see multimodal platforms as Red Bus, as Reservamos, as, as Check My Bus, um, Johannes and distribution is more on the technical side. But do you see multimodal platforms coming where you can buy your flight tickets, have an immediate bus 
to to the city you want to be and a last mile solution via uber via taxi i i, I don't know what to the door you want to get do you see this coming Absolutely. So this will happen. And the, 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 the thing that I can tell you is it will be a lot of different business models. It will be a lot of channels. The, 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 the bus operators who will be better prepared to dynamically switch on and off these different channels, these are the bus operators that will be winning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Don't run. We need your advice after the second keynote because we heard your opinions on how to operate right now, how to prepare for the relaunch of the sector. Second part, smaller in time, is how are we going to pay for this? I hear everybody say, in this crisis, we have quite some time, but we do not have the money or we don't want to risk the money. Uh, so this is it.